Book of Genesis, chapter 24. Isaac and Rebekah. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but will go to my country and to my kindred, and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to, the la to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will bring the, I will give you this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, Please grant to me success today and show steadfast love to my ma to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, Please let down your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very attractive in appearance, a maiden whom no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, Drink, my lord. And she quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water, and she drew for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing, half a, sh weighing a half shekel, and two bracelets for her arms weighing ten gold shekels, and said, Please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there a room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She added, We have plenty of both straw and fodder, and room to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord, and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me into, in, the house, in the way to the house of my master's kinsmen. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban. Laban ran out toward the man to the spring as soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm and heard the words of Rebekah, his sister. Thus the man spoke to me. He went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came to the house and unharnessed the camels, and gave straw and fodder to the camels. And there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Then food was set before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. He said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, male servants and female servants, camels and donkeys. 
And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and to him he has given all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house and to my clan and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, Perhaps the woman, the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, The Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and prosper your way. You shall take a wife for my son from my clan and from my father's house. Then you will be free from my oath when you come to my clan. And if they will not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you are prospering the way that I go, behold, I am standing by the spring of water. Let the virgin who comes out to draw water, to whom I shall say, Please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give your camels drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camels drink also. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you are going to show steadfast love and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing has come from the Lord. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord, and the servant brought out jewelry of silver and of gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and to her mother costly ornaments. And he and the men who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there. When they arose in the morning, he said, Send me away to my master. Her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman remain with us a while at least ten days, after that she may go. But he said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. They said, Let us call the young woman and ask her. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebekah their sister and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, our sister may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. Then Rebekah and her young women arose and rode on the camels and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had returned from Beer Lahai Roy and was dwelling in the Negeb. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field towards evening. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, there were camels coming, and Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel and said to the servant, Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself, and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah his mother and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. All right, that was that was a long read. That was a long read, but hey, if you're still around at this point, got some notes here. So, first thing that I want to point out is uh, the prayer that Abraham's servant had said in verse 12 to verse 14. Excuse me. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, please, 
Please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say, drink and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. So, you know, we get to hear Abraham's servant's prayer. And he is praying that whichever girl comes out that will let him drink from the water shall also say, like, she will also give water to the camels. And almost immediately after, in fact, it says before he could even finish talking in his heart, immediately Rebecca comes out and she, in verse 17, then the servant ran to meet her and said, please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, drink my Lord. And she quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So the prayer is answered very quickly, might I add. And that just shows the steadfast love that God has for Abraham and the prospering of Abraham's servant's journey. In verse 21, the man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. So, you know, he was a bit confused. I think we'd all be if we were to pray and then have it almost immediately answered. And if you are Christian and you have had a similar experience, you get what that confusion is like. So, you know, it can be a bit confusing at times, but rest assured it is from God. Verse 24, she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. This is said, this is backed up by uh, chapter 22, verse 20 to 23. Verse 20, yeah. Now after these things it was told to Abraham, Behold, Milcah has also borne children to your brother Nahor. Uz, his firstborn, Buzz, his brother, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Jesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidluf, and Bethuel. Bethuel fathered Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor and Abraham's brother. So, yeah, you know, like, checks out. Checks out. And if we will go back to near enough the beginning, uh, I didn't take note of this. I just kind of picked up on it. While I was reading through. That I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But will go to my country and to my kindred. And take a wife for my son Isaac. Kindred. Nahor is Abraham's brother. He is Abraham's kindred. He is of Abraham's bloodline. So yeah, that, that also checks out. Uh, verse 60. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister may become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. If you go back to, back again to chapter 22, verse 17. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. So the same promise that God had made to Abraham when he was about to sacrifice Isaac. We see here that uh, I believe it's the servants and the servants men that are saying this to Rebecca. That, you know, it's basically the same promise that God had given to Abraham, but to Rebecca. Our sister may become thousands of ten thousand, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate them. So, yeah. Alright, sorry, my brother had to ask me something, right? Alright, so where was I again? Uh, verse 60... 
our sister may become th thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. And how that reflects to the promise that God made to Abraham when he was going to sacrifice Isaac. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much most of what I have to say there. Uh, they are blessed with similar things, although one is from the Lord and the other is from Abraham's servant. Uh, so do with that information what you will. Uh, verse 62. Now Isaac had returned from Beer Lahai Roy. I am messing up that name, and I know. I was dwelling in the Negev. So this reflects... Well, this brings me back to chapter 16, verse 14, when... Therefore the well was called Bir Lahai Roy, it lies between Kadesh and Barad. Now the reason that I went back to that was because of the story of Hagar and Abraham and the conception of Ishmael. And yeah, I just wanted to bring back that part, right? Because, you know, like, Isaac is the son of Abraham, so is Ishmael. They have different mothers. Uh, Isaac's is Sarah, and Ishmael's is Hagar. And essentially, I just, the fact that Isaac was at the same well that Hagar was when she first saw Jesus, and I think she was the first person in the Bible to actually see Jesus, right? So I, I know, like, it's just an interesting connection there that Isaac would be at the same place that his brother's mother was when she found out she was pregnant with Ishmael. So, yeah. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say today. Thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is. And have a blessed day.